Welcome, pilots! This video is part of a series showcasing the use of regular cruisers for combat site exploration in EVE Online. If you're a young Caldari pilot within your first month of skill training and you're looking for PvE combat against NPC pirates, this video is for you. If you're a brand new player flying a frigate, you might want to watch my Caldari Frigates for New Players video first. That video guide will introduce you to combat site exploration in Caldari space discussing early skill training, weapon systems, and frigate fits suitable for running some of the easier combat sites. This video will pick up where it left off, guiding you through your journey to running slightly more difficult combat sites in a cruiser. You can find the fits presented in this video on my website over at RileyEntertainment.com, as well as additional PvE fits for all Caldari cruisers for both Alpha and Omega pilots. If you're still waiting on skill training before buying your first Caldari cruiser and want to try out a destroyer in the meantime, I might recommend this Korax fit. You'll be able to run sites like the Pith Merchant Depot so long as you can find one that isn't bugged out, as well as the Garista Lookout. These sites are restricted to destroyer-class ships or smaller, so you won't be able to run them in a cruiser. To fly Caldari cruisers, there are a handful of skills you'll first need to train. The most obvious is Caldari Destroyer, followed by Caldari Cruiser. I'll be starting you out in the Caracal, which has missile launcher hardpoints rather than turret hardpoints. The great thing about this ship is that you can start out with rapid light missile launchers, which require no additional weapon skills beyond those you already have. You could choose to train heavy missiles or heavy assault missiles, but light missiles are actually more suitable for most of the combat sites I'll be recommending for younger players. Regular Caldari cruisers have pretty small drone bays, but I would still recommend training drones to at least level 2 before buying your first cruiser. I also consider some of your shield and engineering skills to be extremely important, as they open up many new fitting opportunities. Training shield upgrades reduces the power grid need for shield extenders. I recommend training this to at least level 3 for the time being, with a plan to train to level 4 later in order to be able to fit Tech 2 shield extenders and shield amplifiers. Shield operation and shield compensation are also important for the use of shield boosters. For now, I recommend training this to at least level 3, again with a plan to train to level 4 later. Training energy grid upgrades to at least level 2 allows you to equip a large cap battery, helping you run your shield booster for much longer during combat. Training weapon upgrades to level 4 allows you to equip Tech 2 ballistic control systems. It also opens up advanced weapon upgrades, which reduces the power grid consumption of all weapon turrets and launchers. Once these core skills have been trained, I also recommend continuing to train your missile support skills. This includes rapid launch, warhead upgrades, missile bombardment, target navigation prediction, and guided missile precision. You can also consider training hull upgrades and mechanics to at least level 3. These are a little less important for the shield-focused Caldari ships, but it's always nice to have extra hit points on hull and armor in case you find your shield tank is failing. The core navigation skills are also useful getting to at least level 3. This includes navigation, evasive maneuvering, warp drive operation, and acceleration control. My first Caldari PvE combat cruiser fit is a caracal fit with rapid light missile launchers, an afterburner, and an active shield tank. The caracal has bonuses to missile launcher rate of fire and maximum velocity. Its drone bay and drone bandwidth only allow for up to two light drones, so you won't need strong drone skills to make good use of this ship. These factors make it very easy for young pilots to get themselves into a caracal very quickly. I chose the Metal Level 4 Rapid Light Missile Launchers, as these offer the fastest rate of fire of all Tech 1 missile launchers. I fit a probe launcher to the 5th high power slot, which does unfortunately reduce the overall damage potential of the ship. This decision is in part due to fitting concerns, but it also allows you to explore without having to dock up to change modules every time you probe down a site. In order to make the ship fully cap-stable, I fit a large compact cap battery in one of the mid-slots, and two capacitor flux coils in the low slots. The active shield tank consists of a large restrained shield extender for some extra buffer, a Tech 2 medium shield booster, and an enduring multi-spectrum shield hardener for some extra resistances, along with a core defense operational solidifier rig, which increases the effectiveness of the shield booster. 
The two Tech 2 ballistic control systems help bring the ship's total DPS up above 150. I'm using Scourge light missiles, which deal kinetic damage. And a pair of Hornets in the drone bay, also dealing kinetic. In the Caldari Frigate's video guide, I recommended combat anomalies like the Garista Hideaway, or once you've gained some PvE experience, the Garista Refuge. These are still great sights to run, no matter what ship you're flying. But now that you're in a cruiser with a much stronger tank, I can also recommend the Garista Den. There are two variations of this site. With the recommended Caracal fit, he should be able to handle either without any issue. The great thing about combat with missile launchers is that you can engage at any range up to the maximum range of your missiles. So if you find your tank is starting to fail, you can always pull range a little. If you're itching to use your probe launcher, your new cruiser is quite capable in several combat signatures. While you won't be allowed in sites such as the Garista's Lookout, you can still gain entry into the Garista's Hideout. This site's escalation, the Soothsayer, is great for younger players flying a cruiser. Another site that's quite doable in your Caracal is the Garista's Gorilla Grounds. While you won't be as competitive as more experienced pilots flying faction cruisers, this is a great site to gain PvE combat experience. You'll face a large number of frigates through five pockets, so expect it to take at least 15 minutes. The loot potential is quite good about half the time, so on this run I was quite unlucky. Your main hurdle with rapid light missile launchers is the lengthy 35 second reload time, coupled with their low capacity. In combat sites with a large number of NPCs, I often find myself reloading two of the four launchers early in order to maintain a more consistent damage output. If you like the Caracal, but are annoyed by the constant reloading on your rapid lights, you have the option of training into heavy missile launchers or heavy assault missile launchers. Heavy missile launchers have better range and hold roughly double the number of missiles, but apply less damage than rapid lights, particularly against frigates. While heavy assault missile launchers have significantly less range, hold the most number of missiles, and apply the most damage. The low skill requirement fit presented here can be swapped between either regular heavy missile launchers or heavy assault missile launchers. If you're starting to feel like you'd like to try something different, my next Caldari PvE combat cruiser fit is a MOA fit with railguns, an afterburner, and an active shield tank. This ship does require some additional skill training, if you've ignored your gunnery skills thus far. You'll need to train medium hybrid turret, which I recommend getting to at least level 3 before buying your first MOA. For weapon turrets, you'll also want to train your gunnery support skills. This includes controlled bursts, motion prediction, rapid firing, sharpshooter, surgical strike, and trajectory analysis. The MOA has bonuses to medium hybrid turret damage and shield resistances. It also has significantly more shield hit points than the Caracal. This fit uses the metal level 4 200mm railguns, giving it about 175 DPS with antimatter charges, which will reach out to about 20 kilometers. Switching to iron charges halves the DPS, but allows you to engage at a range of over 45 kilometers. The active shield tank includes a large Enduring Shield Booster, Enduring Multispectrum Shield Hardener, and Kinetic Shield Reinforcer Rig. The two compact power diagnostic systems are necessary to ensure the ship has enough power grid, while simultaneously helping to ensure the fit remains cap stable. With this MOA fit, you'll have no trouble running all the combat sites previously mentioned. For young Caldari pilots who've only piloted ships with missile launchers, the switch to turrets may be somewhat disconcerting. Missiles always hit their targets with consistent damage output, so long as you're within range. Turrets, on the other hand, must track their target, and may miss smaller ships completely if they're orbiting you at close range. You'll want to be mindful of your turret's optimal range with each type of ammunition. I tend to use keep at range when engaging with frigates or destroyers, and orbit when engaging with missile batteries or cruisers or larger ships. If you're looking for a bit more of a challenge, this MOAFIT is also capable of running a site called the Garista's Scout Outpost. The consistent incoming damage here can make this site quite difficult, but the tank on this fit is specifically designed to survive the encounter. I find that taking out the Pitham Mortifiers and other cruisers first helps ease the pressure on your tank. 
you can get a lot of mileage out of cruisers as you continue to train your skills. Bit by bit, you'll gain access to better modules, gain more CPU and power grid for better fitting options, and once you've trained the various missile or hybrid turret specialization skills, access to Tech 2 missiles or ammunition. On my Omega clone character, for example, this upgraded railgun fit MOA manages to get over 320 DPS with antimatter charges and a repair rate of 70 hit points per second. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the option of fitting a passive shield tank over an active shield tank. Passive shield tanks involve fitting passive modules that increase your shield hit points and recharge rate, such as shield extenders in the mid-slots, shield power relays in the low-slots, and core defense shield extender rigs. This option puts much less draw on your ship's capacitor, but will significantly increase your ship's signature radius. It becomes a much more viable option in ships with naturally high shield hit points to begin with, and that have a large number of mid-slots to work with. Now that you've expanded your horizons in a cruiser, and are hopefully making plenty of ISK, you might be looking to try out one or both of the Navy Faction cruisers. The Caracal Navy issue will feel like a stronger version of the regular Caracal, with its bonuses to missile launcher rate of fire and explosion velocity. This latter bonus makes it a little stronger when fighting against frigates and destroyers, as it allows it to apply damage to them better when fitting heavy or heavy assault missile launchers. The Osprey Navy issue also feels like a stronger version of the Caracal, but has bonuses to missile damage and maximum velocity. In general, it's a little better if you plan on engaging at longer ranges. Both the Caracal Navy and Osprey Navy are highly capable ships, able to complete any high-security Garista combat site. With their larger drone bays, I would highly recommend training drones to level 5. And with six mid-power slots, it becomes increasingly viable to choose a passive shield tank over an active shield tank. Most combat site explorers eventually end up in special pirate faction cruisers, such as the Gila or Orthrus. There are still more combat sites to explore beyond those I've mentioned throughout this video, such as the Watch or Vigil. Once you have the ISK to easily replace your ship, I encourage you to fearlessly try them out for yourself. If you ever need a little help running any combat site you find in high security space, you can check out my comprehensive library of video guides right here on this channel. If you're looking for a way to support me directly, I recently started a Patreon account for bonus gaming content. You can find the link for it in the description box below. Stay tuned to Riley Entertainment for more EVE Online combat site guides, and smash that like button if you enjoy my content.